Welcome to a bit of game dev. In this video, let's see how we can create a simple cartoon fire effect using the Unity Shader Graph. For start, open up a new scene, and if you wish, you can set up a post-processing volume with the values you see on screen. First thing we'll do is create a new unlit shader graph. In the shader graph, create a texture 2D property, name it mask and assign the default particle texture to it. Also, change the graph settings to unlit transparent and leave the blend to alpha. Now, sample the texture and multiply it with a simple noise. Play with the scale of the noise. Next, we'll create a step node. This will give our particles a nice dissolve over time effect. To further stylize our particle, we'll add a twirl node to our simple noise. Play around with the values to see how it affects it and create a property twirl strength so we can tweak the values in the editor. We'll also add an offset over time to our twirl node, so we get a more dynamic part. Change the values and expose the speed through a property. Next, to give our particles some more randomness, we'll create a distortion effect using another simple noise. We will remap the simple noise values and multiply by the distortion strength property. Finally, we'll get the distortion by adding our noise to the base UV node and inputting the results in our twirl node. For the final touch, we'll also add an offset over time to our distortion. We can change the distortion strength to see how it affects our particle. Let's just multiply our output by 2 to increase the intensity a little. Now, in our editor, create the material for our shader. And create a new particle system. Assign the material and reset the particle system's lifetime, speed, and turn off the shape component. And in the velocity of our lifetime, set the Y value to 1. Also, reset the transform of the particle system. And set the emission over time to 1 so we can see our particle. Now, to be able to modify the color of our particle, we need to insert the vertex color node in our shader graph. Multiply only the alpha channel with our step node and plug in the main output of the vertex color node to our base color. Now we can change the color of our particle. For the next detail, we want our particle system to control our dissolve over time. Open up the shader graph, create the UV node and change its channel to UV1. The particle system can modify the RGBA values of this node. We'll use the R value for our dissolve over time and plug it in the edge field over step node and the G value to randomize the offset of each particle by adding a value to our offset over time. Let's duplicate and implement the offset add to our distortion as well. Now, we can see the particle is not displaying correctly. To fix that, go to the render segment of our particle system and activate the custom vertex streams. Add the UV2 field and the custom 1XYZW. Next, activate the custom data segment and set the custom one to a vector. These four values correspond to the RGBA values of our UV node in the shader graph. Now set the X value to a curve and play around with the values. You'll see we get our desired dissolve over time. Modify our curve and the values of our material till we get an effect we are pleased with. And for our Y value, set it from minus 1 to 1 so each particle will start at a random offset and have a different dissolve pattern. Let's increase our emission over time and play around with the color over time node to get a nice transition from red to black. Finally, set the sort mode to youngest in front. I added a new particle system and disabled everything and parented our fire to the new particle system. 
This will serve as our parent system, so we can still see the preview. For the next step, duplicate the red fire particle system and rename it orange fire. Modify the color of our lifetime segment Set the size and lifetime values to what seems good to you And finally, set the order in layer to 1 so we can see the new particle system in front When we're finally satisfied with our color, duplicate and create our final particle system. Let's name it Yellow Fire, and for this system, we'll need an additive material. To create an additive material, duplicate our shader graph, rename it, and in the shader graph settings, change the blend mode to additive. Duplicate the existing material and change the shader to our new additive shader. Assign the material and change the order in layer to 2. Deactivate the color over lifetime and set the main color to yellow. The effect is essentially finished, but you can play around with the values a little bit to perfect it. There we have it, our cartoon fire effect. Thank you for watching this speedy tutorial. A link to the project will be available in the description. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.